2024 special meeting of the Greenberg County Republican Executive Committee. Um, John, do you mind saying a prayer for us? Sure you are. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful, thankful for the sunshine today and thankful for Lord that we live here in America. Uh, I know, Lord, that there's so many things going on around the world and around our nation, around our state, but Lord, the business at hand here this evening, we pray that you'll be with us here and now. And we know that uh, what we do is important. It's important to I learned to our county and to our region here, but it's important in the lives of people. So we ask you to be with us, uh, guide our thoughts, to our deliberations, and everything that we do. May we do it uh, sincerely and and reverently. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to call the roll tonight. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd appreciate you doing that. Um, Starting with, I need to call Steve. He asked to call. Danny, did, have you heard anything from Jim? Uh, yes, uh, he's out. He's Is he out. recovering well? He, he's doing the best he can. Jim had another major back surgery, Jim Childers. And in certainly. the neck area. Yes, in the oh, neck area. Yeah. But I guess it's on the spine. It's yeah. not a cord, though, right? Yeah. Oh, well, not, not pleasant at all. Um, Sue, have you heard from Marie? I talked with her and she knew about the news tonight, so I'm not sure. She was on TV last week. Was she? <coughs> yeah, she was on TV. That's cool. This is, this is Steve Dunford just asked me to call in. About, uh, against uh, slaughterhouse. Can you hear us, Steve? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yep, okay. So starting with the Western District Roll Call, John Wyatt. Here. Steve Dunford. Veronica Bishop. Here. Linda Spencer. Here. Central District, Annie Campbell. Here. Jim Childers, not here. Um, Sue McKinney. Here. Debbie Bowman. Here. Eastern District, I'm here. Hi. Uh, Trey, has anybody heard from Trey? No. No. Okay. Check with them later. Um, uh, Marie's not here. And Sharon McCallister. Here. Okay. We do have a quorum. Um, is there a motion to approve this agenda as written? I do. Danny moves. Is there a second? I do. Veronica seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, opposed? Thank you. Um, this being a special meeting, dispensing with any need for secretary or treasurer support. We got a lot of secretaries minutes to catch up and Jamie knows it. Uh, and then I think that Linda took minutes at one meeting. Yeah. And so we'll just look at all our heads together for the next regular meeting when Robert's rules would require that they all be published by doing so. Um, any old business before we get to the purpose of the night? Hearing none, let's go into new business. All right, the main purpose for us having this special meeting is approving rules and guidelines for the county commissioner ballot appointment. Um, this is kind of a unique situation um, with what we're having to do, but I do want to read this section of code. Raleigh County's in our, their shape. Raleigh County was in the same shape, but it, they, oh, fixed it really they fixed it real quick. They pointed somebody to the ballot last night. We're doing, we're taking a longer route than some, but I think it's a good thing to probably take a longer route. County executive committees are each for each party are responsible for nominating a candidate for their respective parties to fill the vacancy in nomination on the general election ballot. In this case, would be filling the unexpired term of Commissioner Blaine Phillips. It's according to West Virginia Code 3107G. The deadline for the executive committees to fill the vacancy is 78 days before election day. That's according to West Virginia Code 3519B. To make the appointment, the executive committees must make the nomination formally at a duly called meeting and have the nominees submit to the county clerk a certificate of announcement, an executive committee nomination form, which I have, 
and there is of course the filing fee um, which would be very nice probably if our committee would just when the time comes to just pay it for that candidate um, those are due about 78 days before election day and by math, my math that is by the end of August I believe um, I have drafted a proposal to review tonight of how we would go about doing this and we want to make some adjustments that's perfectly fine um, wanted to make this in a way that it was fair but also somewhat prompt mainly because if we have a county commissioner candidate before the July 4th parade that would be a good thing so that person can participate and have their face out there by that point um, so I'd like to have this done by June 25th, and I think we can do it. One, the party will pay for legal advertisement, advertising in the 613 edition of the West Virginia Daily News, which is Thursday, with a link to our online application. I did mention this to Trey, and Trey is going to put it on our website, um, and it'll be up, really, Thursday morning. Uh, that way it's ready to roll. Um, this ad will run in the June 13th, June 18th, and June 20th editions of the West Virginia Daily News with the application process ending at the link will be shut down at midnight June 20th, 2024. We will also post the link on our Facebook page each of those dates. The online application will be created by Trey. He's already agreed to do that. Each applicant must submit the following, a resume, no more and no less than two references with contact information, no reference letter required. Two paragraphs on why they would like to be considered for the position. Three, an ad hoc committee consisting of Debbie Bowman, Sue McKinney, and Trey Ewing would create a list of 10 pertinent questions related to the county commission and our Republican Party platform. Each candidate will be asked the same exact questions. These 10 questions will be sent to the committee no later than Thursday, June 20th for review. Then the full committee will approve the questions right before we go into interviews. That way if we want to change one thing out real quick, that's fine, but we'll just take care of it the same night. That way we'll already have a general draft and we'll move on from there. Um, the committee will approve the questions and the candidates will be brought in for interviews. The interviews will be held at Greenberg Valley Board of Realtors office behind the law office of Goodwin Hammond starting at 7 o'clock p.m. on June 25th. This will be an official special meeting of the Greenberg GOP. The interviews will be held in executive session. The committee will discuss the candidates, executive session will be closed, and the committee will then vote in a public vote. When I say public vote, meaning that they will know the results, but the voting itself would be done by a secret ballot, which I think is the only fair way to do this. Um, if there are more than two candidates, there will be a process of elimination by which the lowest vote getter will be dropped, unless the highest vote getter receives over 50% on that ballot. If they've already got a majority, then there's no point in having a second vote. Um, the first candidate to receive a majority will receive the Republican nomination for the Central District. I, the chairman, will not vote unless there is a tie. It being a 12-person committee, it, we don't want a situation where it ends up six to six. Nobody wants that. So I would only vote unless another person were to abstain and we somehow end up in a tie. Uh, it being secret ballot, I don't see why we would need, um, I, I don't see why we would need to um, uh, have a tie. And I don't see why anybody would have to abstain other than myself. So for the committee, before we go forward, What's general thoughts about this? Anything we can tweak? Anything we can make better? 
open discussion before we go into approving it. Um, I would Debbie. I would like to make a motion that the committee pay for the filing fee. That's fine. Um, we probably do need to vote. I can't on even that. remember how much that is. Ray might know. Well, Ray's would be different because it's delegate. Yes. Sir. Yeah. And, yeah. It's like what one percent of salary or something. Four, four fifty. Right. Yeah. 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 I think with this being a unique situation, I think that's the only fair thing. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be my Can message. I make a comment? Sure. Okay. I think that fee is one percent of the annual salary, but it will be reduced because it's only a two thirds of a term. Even oh, I had thought of that. Oh, yeah. I Even think better. It will be reduced for that. That's a good point. And isn't Greenberg County's commission like 40,000 somewhere around there I'm not sure. somewhere around there so not that bad um, okay beyond that any any other thoughts on this what takes the 25th that is a Tuesday night may I yes well if you have an absentee during that um, you, you mean if a person does not Come or, or if Jim is still recovering and he can't. Well, I'm going to push Jim to, to join by telephone. I really think that he should have, with two more weeks under his belt, you, don't you think, Danny, he'd I be able to tough. participate by telephone? I think he'll really want to as well. Um, <clears throat> so, but if some, if there are some extenuating circumstances, then at that point, I, I don't really know what the committee can do because we, we kind of, I, I am kind of wanting to push to get this done on the 25th. <clears throat> um, only because I think it would be a very uniting thing for us to have this all, everybody together on July 4th. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I would also like to say that regarding myself and being a, an employee of the Greenberg County Courthouse, mm -hmm. I did reach out to the um, Secretary of State's office asking for an opinion regarding if there'd be a conflict of interest with myself and um, the position of the County Commission. And basically, um, the letter states, um, thank you for reaching out. State law is silent on the issue. The Executive Committee is the only body with authority to fill the vacancy on the ballot, so its members are the only folks allowed to participate in the nomination process to West Virginia Code, blah, blah, blah. If your committee has enough members to constitute a quorum without your participation, it's up to you whether or not you want to recuse yourself for appearance sake. However, the law does not require your recusal. And with it being secret ballot. Secret ballot yeah. doesn't matter, so, right? So right. I, think, I think I'm okay on that. I think so too. Just, just to be sure. I appreciate you doing the, your diligence on that. Yeah. Oh, cool. That helps. Well. <laughs> I mean, to explain. Well, he can remind us on the filing fee because yeah. he's had to do it four times in his life. <laughs> Perfect timing. We have a question for you. What is the filing fee for county commissioner? Not. You've done it four times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, I would say it's, it's usually 10% or something. So we're... <clears throat> Used to be three hundred sixty some dollars. I think it's four hundred and change now. You were pretty pretty yeah. close. Uh, close. Our salaries are at about forty two, so the four twenty. Oh, in that neighborhood. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, well, that's good. Um, any other thoughts before we move forward on this? But my, I, I think that this gets us done efficiently and fairly. And I, I have found in looking for precedent statewide that every county has done it differently. So I have tried to shape this in a way that it's very similar to the delegate selection process. Just with a full week, applications, um, and we'll just go from there. But I, I think that this is pretty fair. And we're not like Jefferson County's. Don't. <clears throat> right. We don't want to be like Jefferson County. No, we don't want to be like Jefferson County. Jefferson County. They got a mess up there. That's a, it's a bad situation. So now that my question is, the application will go through the website 
And then the resume will come by mail or they can... No, the resume online. will be able to be uploaded through okay. the, the website. So everything will all be together. Right. Uh, it, it's going to be basically like one of those survey monkey links. Okay. And you're going to print them out so we have a paper copy. Yes, and, and, and I would... One of our pee-picking hands. Well, and I would prefer that that is in everybody's hands the same night yeah. that the, the, that the uh, application closes um, so that everybody has a couple days to review that material before that Tuesday night. Right. Um, now, for you, we we might we might do certified express mail. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How are, how are you going to get these things to us? That is correct. Uh, how? Get email. I don't want I don't want an email. I want paper. I want you to print it off and give it to me. Okay. Paper copy. Sounds I want good. Paper. Okay. That day. Sure. We'll make a spot to meet. Yeah, yeah. We'll, get we'll get them distributed. We'll get it distributed. Everybody else will. Um, but I'll put them off and are we all okay on the what actually would go on the application? Resume, two references, why you want to be a commissioner. I think that's pretty straightforward. And they can be 18 years old. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, we can look them up on the GOP database. And if they're not registered to vote, then we'll know why. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point, huh? Get it? So we may have to <coughs> must, must be a registered Republican. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, yes. Are you going to make reference to the district that they have to come out of? Yes, that's a very good Central point. Central district. Well, and the, of course, the good news, good thing is, right, and that needs to be that needs to be on the, the ad that, that you must live in the Central District. Now, a lot of people don't even know what their district is, mm -hmm. because a, and a lot of it changed for a lot of people two years ago. Uh, so the lines are still a little bit, or a little wonk, a little wonky in people's minds. Like half of Ronsford, um, all of Lewisburg, Maxwell. Well, Davis Stewart Road Frankfurt. got got a little bit yeah, switched up. Sh 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 right. So the good news is we have the GOP database that all I have to do is plug in a name, and it tells me exactly what district they live in. Well, if we go ahead and put over there, you know, must be a, a registered Republican and live in the district, we avoid all those applications that have nothing yeah, to do with it's wasting boring. time for yes. us. So you add those two things, I think we be okay. Sorry, sorry, Veronica. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, the, uh, the districts for the county commission are the same at Board of Education, right? It goes off match for real districts. So yes. They, Yes. 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 That's what I thought. I was like, man, districts didn't really change, did they, a couple years ago? They did change slightly, didn't they, Lowell? Just slightly. Just enough that there's a couple people on the fringes got that got affected. Um, I just know that when the state party does delegate selection, that they will get all sorts of crazy applications. We've seen applications from independents. We've seen applications from registered Democrats. Um, oh, that is a good point. I think that we should, though, say that if you are not a registered Republican as of January 1st of this year, right. yes. then you should be thrown out. Are yes. we cool with that? Yes. 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 Can I make that into a motion? Well, we, let's... Um, uh, we want to add those two uh, points. Let's right? do this. We'll just say we're adding those two points okay. to this. So whenever the motion is made on this, we will say with those two additions. Okay. Cool. Yes. Instead of January 1st, why don't you go with uh, May the 13th, the day before our last primary? Why? They'll have to make the, a decision by then. And a lot of people, you know, they, some people may be disqualified for that difference in five months. The voter registration closing deadline, um, I think it was like a week or two before early voting. That would probably be the ideal number you could go with. I think it was April 20th. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I might have April 20th. Okay, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Because you may have had some um, independence change Republican or. Right, that's fair. April 20th? Let's, let's, what about you have a Democrat change Republican just like right there before? Well, it's, it's, we'll be able to find that out. Okay. That's, 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 
That, that, that will be discovered. Okay. I guess. It's like a criminal investigation in discovery. <laughs> Did a background check. <laughs> <laughs> background check. Oh, I don't think we need That's okay. But the good thing is in a small to town like this, I'd say if we get an applicant that's a felon, we'll find out real quick. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. As long as we will. Sure. Uh, one thing about it, Hunter Biden can't apply. Anyways, um, any other questions on this? Do I hear a motion to approve this with the two changes? Then Danny second. So Steve made the motion. Danny seconded. Okay, just to review the the two changes were uh, that it has to be they have to live in the central district and be a Republican as of April twentieth. Yes. Should you specify what the central district is? No, because then you're getting in the weeds. Because well, they can find they can call the courthouse. Yeah, yeah. They can just call the courthouse. Or look at their better call the courthouse. Yeah. Yes. Uh, right. You know, do their work. I think it's under regular. Call Lowell. No, it's not. Yeah, oh, they can do their work. That's what we'll put in the ad. Call Lowell. <laughs> there you go. They can do their work. Okay. Call work. Um. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. I'd say there was a precinct number. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Hearing none. Motion passes. Okay. We have rules and guidelines, and so I think, we're, we think we've exhausted that topic. Um, this other stuff is, is kind of short and sweet and to the point. Uh, one, was yes. that included that we pay the fee? We also need to vote on that. Well, let's have a separate motion on that. Okay. I will make a motion that the um, executive committee pay for the filing fee for the candidate. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Let's give it to good old John. Okay. The third right. <laughs> That's okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Thank you. That's good. Storage unit. Um, we've had the storage unit for about a year. Um, I, uh, I've just been covering that for now. And I, we kind of mentioned in passing that after a year, we wanted to kind of put that, that bill on the GOP. Um, I called Josh Duncan who owns Secure Storage, um, that unit, that is an outdoor unit, uh, usually runs $281 a month. I asked Josh as a contribution, as a contribution, no, Joe Sharp, I don't have time to talk to you right now, as a contribution to the local GOP. So that, that's been running $3,372 a year. I asked Josh as a contribution to the executive committee whether or not he would be willing to in kind a portion of that and only charge us $100 a month. And he agreed to it as long as Secure Storage is one of the main sponsors of our events going forward. I think that's a heck of a deal. Yes. That saves our committee $2,100. Um, and like Veronica, this was Veronica's idea. So thank you, Veronica. Thank you, I like Veronica. To take money, you know. yeah. Yes, we're conservatives like that. I am very conservative. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, so, but I would like to actually have a motion that we approve that. Danny moves that we approve the twelve hundred dollars a year, and that would be spaced out as an automatic debit coming out of the account. Uh, of a hundred dollars a month. Um, is there a second? And, and you never know. Throughout the year, someone may donate money for the unit. Well, Veronica's idea is that we could have a specific fundraiser, specifically to the point of let's raise twelve hundred dollars in, in one night and just cover it for the year. Cover the whole year. Yeah. What's in the storage? The elephant. Yeah. Um, the tons size. of signs. Tons oh. of parade decorations, event decorations. Um, I now have some shelving that we can put in there, but the biggest thing is we got to organize that. And then Danny knows this. Yes. We've got to organize that. <laughs> yes, it's messy in there right now because over time well, they just have to throw I things. Can, uh, fix it a little bit. Oh, we fixed it. Don't pay more good for you. At least you can walk. How large would you say the unit is? 
Maybe 10 by 12? Uh, I think it's larger Deeper than that. Do what? Deeper than that. Yeah, it's a little 16. 10 by, 10 by 15 or 16, yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. Because that, that elephant is, what, eight feet eight feet long in its own, right? And that's and this, that's only half the unit. Right. So I think it goes yeah. back to at least 16 feet, I think. Yes, we have coolers, we have signs, we have decorations, we have tables, we have the tents, we have chairs. And so I, I, if we could. We never leave a space from that. And if we could have the shelving to where on this section, this is dinner supply, this section, this is parade supply. Yeah. Um, Sand. So, I think well, I have it already like that within boxes. So that's another point, though, about signs. I would prefer the candidates kept their own signs. But as for the stakes, I, we've, can, we've done a really good job over the years of recycling stakes to where in the future, I'd never want a candidate to have to buy their own stakes. There's no point. Just use the same ones over and over again. Uh, so primary candidates, I've, and I've asked a couple of those who did not win to donate theirs, and a lot of them have agreed also to just donate their stakes to us to help the party. So that's continued on that. Did we vote on that? No. Okay. We had a, the, the motion was... Seconded by Veronica. Second, we haven't voted yet. Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. Trump budget. We'll just touch on this briefly. We're not making an order now. The Trump Pence signs for 2024. Trump Pence. Well, God help us if we have Pence. We don't want Pence. Um, Trump whoever signs will be available by August. Because um, we'll have a vice presidential nominee by the middle of July. We are able to get... Last time, we got him for a buck and a quarter. This time, we're getting him for a buck seventy four. That ain't bad, considering inflation. Right. And we but sold him for five bucks each. We'll have charge an eight this year. I don't want to do that, because uh, for one thing, it's an odd number. And it's easy to throw a five than an eight. It's easier to throw a five than an eight, so and, and then number maybe two. Maybe throw a ten and just keep. Well, that's true, and that'll happen a lot, but um, I do want to do this. I've been pushing this with some of the other counties. <coughs> if you have somebody that is a registered Democrat that comes up to your booth, to our booth, wherever we are. And we have access to just log online real quick to say, if you s sit down <coughs> and switch right now your party to Republicans, we'll give you this sign for free. I think it's a great way to get people to switch parties. But they can go back and switch back, you know? Mm. The time that it'll take them to do that is very unlikely. Okay. It's a good idea, but I don't think people will do it. You don't trust people. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> Once again, you are conservative. Very conservative. It's just an idea, but when the time comes, they're a buck seventy-five, and we made a killing off of those things in 2020. Right. Um, this year, we are not having to spend as much money on candidates. Because we are only going to have three contested <laughs> elections locally. Our two delegate races and one county commission race. That's it. And the two delegate races are going against frickin' frack, Kayla McCoy and Paul Depp, so I'm not really concerned about that. But I do think we need to give a donation to those two candidates. Are we all in agreement that there's no point in giving money to the four candidates that are running unopposed? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Thank you. yes. Have we had any requests? No, we have had no requests, which I think everybody's under the understanding that this year, rather than, of course, we'll do what we can do our normal stuff, get our regular four by eights with our candidates, do our regular Facebook ads. But I don't think we have to go overboard this year. I think this is an opportunity for to build a war chest for the future, build up our money so that you know, we can 
be really protected for the future. Um, the county commissioner race, it is my understanding that the Democrats are going to nominate Brad Tuckfuller, um, who has lost two consecutive elections in Greenberg County. Um, three, count the fact that he was basically Heather Hill for three months. Um, he, um, Brad Tuckwiller is a horrible human being, and I cannot wait for us to beat the tar out of him. Um, but beyond, and Paul Ditch, and Caleb McCoy. Um, but I do think our only money on candidates should be on Ray, Jeff, and whoever our county commissioner nominee is. Can I make a comment on that? Sure. We want our candidates, even though they're running unopposed, to still be actively involved in the community and out. So, I mean, I think maybe there should be a small amount, maybe $100 for candidates, because, I mean, fuel reimbursement, stuff like that can be deducted. I mean, maybe. they will be involved. Yeah. Uh, they want to be with us for the parades and stuff like that, I'm sure. Well, and I have checked. I mean, Jack David has $8,000 sitting in his campaign account as is. Yeah. You know? And Nicole has about... A thousand. Um, uh, Tammy has a little bit. Um, and who's our fourth that's unopposed? Bart. Bart has about two thousand dollars. So everybody is, I think, okay, okay to get them through at least. So that's a blessing. As long as our candidates are in good standing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the only reason I want to bring up Trump budget tonight is I do think we need to have, we have a couple signs and we have that flag. Yes. But for Alderson 4th of July, I think we might need a couple extra things. Yes, we do. Signs. Yeah. It's signs on top. Can we get the signs on top? By the 25th of June. No. But they're not, they're the, the only problem is they're not going to have a, a vice presidential nominee. Yeah. So we really don't want many. We'll wait for the fair. Uh, I, well, I think we've got to have, so we need to buy a new Trump cutout because our old one is ratty. Ratty. And the Reagan's also. Yeah, the Reagan is not in the greatest shape either, but this is being a Trump year, I think we need to focus on the Trump. <coughs> Excuse me, we've got the one that was left over from October. We've is he an okay sh Oh, that was for the auction. Yeah. Oh, we auctioned that off, didn't we? I thought we auctioned it off. Yeah, we can't find that. Auctioned off which one? As a matter of fact, I think it belongs to Dickie Holiday, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It was. I remember it wasn't very expensive. It was only like thirty nine dollars or something. Something pretty cheap. Can we <laughs> set a budget? <laughs> can we set like a two hundred dollar budget? just to go out and if we need to before 4th of July, replace a couple things, replace them. I make it. I make, we yeah, I'll second. John moves, Danny seconds. <clears throat> Any discussion? <coughs> Usually the GOP store online, which is based out of Maryland of all places, is pretty decent deals on that kind of stuff. Speaking on behalf of Mr. Holiday, I'm sure we've read it back to the GOP for a nominal fee. Nominal fee. <laughs> <laughs> How very generous. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's over six hundred dollars for we sent him a ten ninety nine. Um all in favor say aye. Aye. All favor. Okay. Um headquarters. Steve we're still whenever we're still good on that location in Grain Elm, correct? I'm still trying to get a hold of him. I've had no luck. I reached out to his mother yesterday. Uh, I'm still trying to get a hold of him. Have you have you talked to his dad, David Ball? Have you talked to his dad?
Well, we have a little bit of time. I, I think we kind of mentioned in passing, there's no point in starting the headquarters until we have Trump merchandise to sell. Are we in, in agreement yes. on that? Yes. 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 Oh, people be coming. I want material. I want material. Exactly. I mean, I just remember, 2020, we were selling Trump signs into the state of Virginia for counties. Uh, so, I just think that we need to wait until probably immediately after the fair is over. We kept running out. That's yeah. Let me see. That's right. The twentieth of August. Well, we, and we don't even want to <laughs> set, set a date tonight, but I think that maybe we can set a goal that the week of the twenty sixth of August that we can open at least one headquarters. Are we all in agreement that we want to try to have two, the Western End and it's Central East? Yeah. It is tough over here, but I, I don't think we have a choice. But there is one place, if we call, contact them, is Fritz's old building beside of uh, Go Mart. You're talking about beside of where Ben Ex Med Express currently is? Yes. I have talked to Tom Johnson about that previously, and they have not been willing to rent. Now, Debbie, what about the place north of Lewisburg beside of West Virginia Physical Therapy? Yeah, um, there's an office space inside of the West Virginia Physical Therapy office that's right beside Tudors. Um, I spoke to a lady a couple of times, and she would give it to us. I think it was $800 a month. I'll have to check on that and see, but uh, it's two large uh, rooms, and it would have its own <clears throat> entry and exit. Like, you could come through the main door, or you could go around back and park in the back and come in the back door. Uh, they've recently been refurnished, refurbished, and um, and it's and it's available up until she rents it out. So, but it's it's been for rent now for almost a year. What's the square footage? No, oh, I have to check on that and see. I took pictures and I sent it to you guys a while back, but. Um, I like having two rooms because one, what we did in twenty <laughs> was so good as we had. One room that was for merchandise, and one room that was for socializing. Yeah. It's better that way. Are we getting, are we doing anything to get money? I mean, we're spending, but are we doing anything? We're going to have to have a major, of course, the Trump signs in of itself is going to be a major fundraiser. Yeah, but until then, you're talking about August. They'll go fast. But I will say, in the meantime... Are we doing anything, any group in the, uh, for um, Alderson or 4th of July or more? Or a booth? Anything? Yeah, if if, if somebody... Last year. Well, I think by Alderson, maybe if we wanted to up that Trump budget and get more stuff, I just don't really see the point in having a booth until we... The have screen. the stuff yeah now I talked to I talked to Gordon Campbell uh, and Gordon and, and I'm going to come to the next club meeting um, Gordon and I pretty much had an agreement that this year um, the club and the executive committee could split the state fair booth uh, mainly because the club needs volunteers and we want to have a way to try to bring ourselves together as a united front, especially for this year. Um, so that we will not be having that booth outside the fairgrounds. And of course, last year we made $2,000 on that, but that was hard labor, extremely hard labor. <laughs> Nothing can be sold in the, in the West Virginia building. Um, so we're not going to have that income this year. Um, but I think it's the, if we're the very next week opening up a headquarters, then I think we'll be fine. Also, the state party last year, last election, reimposed us for our headquarters expenses. I don't see why they couldn't this time too. Because they need victory offices. <clears throat> Um, so we won't have to worry so much about that fee. Um, 
Any other thoughts on headquarters before we move on for now? Um, the office space at the West Virginia Physical Therapy location is, um, it's two separate rooms. It's, it's pretty small, it's only 300 square feet. It includes the utility and it rents for $825, but we will need to do our own Wi-Fi if that's required, if we need Wi-Fi. And we did that hotspot box yeah. holes last time. So we'll need a phone and Wi-Fi or a cell phone to, to use while we're there. Okay. Then you want to have a building in Knott'sbury. It's hard to get people to go down the hill. They don't want to go over the hill. Yeah. We have time to think about it, but if anybody... I have changed, you know, up here. Anybody that wants to be checking around for us about, a good, about other good spots, let me know. Um... Before we close, talking about ideas for the remainder of the year, and I think we do need to start thinking about um, a dinner. Um, At uh, the event we had out of the park, uh, Crawley. And Crawley, and then the, uh, you know, all the, all the uh, Trump train, you know, the vehicles and all that. That, that went over super well. Oh my gosh, it was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think you should think about doing something like that again. I mean, uh, I agree completely. A lot, a lot of work. But, uh, uh, that was profitable, but the Greenbrier uh, camp wasn't. Yes, the Christian retreat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it'd be great to have something out there again. And then also there is the new venue out in Crawley that's owned by Sean and Susie Johnson that can hold up to 300 some people. Um, <laughs> it's open yet. It is open. What'd you say, Steve? They have put more parking in since uh, we discussed that last. Okay, and they've, yeah, they've started having weddings. Well, that is now the largest venue in Greenburn County that, uh, because for an organization like this, because the Armory will not allow us to do it there because we're Republican, they can't do politics, and the Greenburn Hotel is just a little bit too expensive. Cable barn out of Paris, Grancy Yeah. That's a little out of the way, so. A little out of the way. Off the dogs exit. It's just. So what what time frame are you talking about? Well, I haven't put much thought into it. <laughs> but I would really appreciate it if you all would before a July meeting. Yeah. We can get you some and then by the July meeting. Huh? Not West Virginia. Uh, that's right. Not on a West Virginia football game. And we need to check also because we have a ton of people that are clamoring for another Trump train parade. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we have to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that we need to do it right before the election. Yeah. You know, last time it was on Halloween. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking at November 2nd. Of course, we'll check on WVU ball game, but I didn't anticipate we'd get thousands of people. Well, that was the second parade. But Steve, remember that was the second parade. The first parade, we had better police presence. Um, that's when they led us by Greg Wingo's house. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that that worked out really well. That other time, they were probably setting up here on the interstate running radar, but it shouldn't be. Well, <laughs> the second parade was different because that was a ticketed parade. So that was a little different. This is just once again the free for all it was the first time. And that was so much fun. It was so much fun. Yeah. Had an idea. How many hundred vehicles were in there? Oh, yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, you haven't put there was nine hundred some vehicles. <laughs> yeah. So now we gotta beat it. Wow. We gotta beat it. Um, but let's just be thinking about how we wanna do a dinner, um, and where we wanna do a dinner. There's no football game on the second. There's no football game on November 2nd. 
Well, that's if great. That is, if you're a fan of something yeah. else, I mean, really don't matter. Yeah, yeah, they don't is. matter. <laughs> they don't matter. They got the first. That's right. <laughs> um, any other thoughts right now for the party? What about a hot dog hamburger function? Well, well that, then honestly, we might just have two events. Because what we could possibly do is do something out of Crawley at the Christian retreat and make that kind of like a picnic style like we did before. The more people we can get together just to fellowship and hang with things. Yeah. And you draw Nicholas Lafayette in Summers. Right. I do think that what we could, it's important that we appeal both directions. We want to have our regular high dollar. Um, I, I consider fifty dollar high dollar uh, dinner, but also we want to have something that's for how do I put it? Normal people, working class, working class, we the common people. Uh, that's a the West Enders. That's, that's right. Normal. That's right. That's right. I'm not, well, I'm not. Well, we could we could do we could start buying burgers. Right. What what John? What do we call them? The uh, the deplorables. Can I have something for the deplorables? Hey, um, Ben, we can serve Biden burgers and charge fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. They're gonna be vegan. Like that. Fifty dollars. That's good. Maybe hamburger chips. Hamburger and chips. That's right. Fifty yeah. bucks. That <laughs> always works. Um, I think we're gonna have an exciting rest of the year. Early. We had three headquarters in 2020 in the middle of COVID. Yeah. And that just about we about died <laughs> but it worked yeah but it worked yeah um white sulfur surprised me in 2020 of how much business they brought us yeah they brought us a ton of business yeah. um so i think that we before the year is up i think we should try to have some sort of event in every community yeah. whether it be something small you know, 2020, we had a nice event in Alderson where we had pepperoni rolls mm -hmm. and we got about 60 people out in Alderson and we had never had anything in Alderson before and it was great. So. Bunch of good people in there. Yes, there are. I got Sharon Callister. Church of Yeah. Right. Baptist will have something. That's right. Yeah. 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 Most of our polling <laughs> churches so they're acclimated to political activity to at least to some extent. Yeah, that's like the absolutely. Church, the yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, what's on on our mind? Let's talk about parades. Um, thank you to Danny Campbell for taking the lead on Farmers Day. We yeah. had a. Had I also a, want to thank Mark Jarvis. Yes, and thank you, Mark, for being our hauler of the Gipper. He's a good hauler, I think. And not only that, they wiped down the Gipper and gave him a little little sponge bath, didn't you? It was a great job. No, we didn't get the sponge bath. But it was a great parade. I'll tell you, there was a lot of people there. At least 5,000. Well, if you watch the video and they announced the Republican Party, it sounded like they went crazy. Yeah, they did. They gave us yeah. a big applause. Oh, really? Good. So and they so it was it was elephant. Mark. They love an elephant. They love that elephant. They do. That elephant. I don't know Danny or the elephant. But both of them. You know. <laughs> <laughs> There's Danny, Jeff, Mark Jarvis, Jack David Woodrum, and Debbie Woodrum. And you know, you know, for for parades like that, you don't need a ton of people. Now for Alderson, I want a ton of people. Me too. Well. Um, <laughs> We held, uh, back in 2020, I believe it was not 2020, 2022, I think, we had um, uh, a separate trailer at Alderson. Yes, yes. And then there's another trailer behind us of people dressed up as Trump, the Statue of Liberty, and they've already volunteered to do it again. <laughs> so I'm, ex I'm excited about that. So my point is this weekend is the River Festival parade is seven o'clock on Friday uh, hopefully you can hop on that one with us that would be good um, Ray Canterbury's first ride with the Gipper 
That's what he said on top of it. He could sit on top of the elk. Now, there is an old photo of Ray Canterbury with a donkey. Was that, sure was that, was, was that the, uh, was that the uh, donkey ball? Yes, it was. Yeah. That's where I got thrown off on my shoulder. That donkey knew I was a Republican or something. <laughs> donkey yeah. basketball or something like it that. It was donkey baseball. Baseball. Yeah. Um, it's one of the things you get asked to do in your politics is to go make an ass of yourself. <laughs> you get to go ride a donkey, and uh, yeah, I thought I had the, I thought I had this thing down pat. I thought you know this donkey's really calm, so I let go of the reins. He knew it, and the next thing you know, I'm on the ground on this shoulder, and I put me out of the game. I quit right there. So this is. This is dangerous. Put you on the DL, huh? Wow. Well, so now what time on Friday should we plan on be there? I think we should plan to be there at uh, uh, 545. And where is the be there spot? On the Island Park. Yeah. Um, it's easiest to just go under the bridge and go on Monroe Avenue that way. Yeah, we'll uh, get together then. Yes. I'll, get I'll be busy hawking duck tickets. I'll be there to help them to decorate. Okay. So. Well, we've almost got all decorated. Yes, <laughs> we, it's pretty much put, put together yes. for the most part. Oh, yes. yes. Except for maybe use the back of Mark's truck for people sitting in. Well, and if we wanted to, remember we also have inflatables that we could put in the back of that truck yes. if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, so where's all the people riding? They can walk. They can walk. Yeah. There's some main walkers. Um Rennick Freedom is the last Saturday of this month. Um then July fourth. And then nothing for a while until really Frankfurt Autumn Fest and Fair. So any other comments? Hello, Luki. No comments? Are we good? Okay, that's fine. Tell me again when the next meeting is. Uh, so the next meeting will be 25th, Tuesday 25th at 7 o'clock, and that will be interview night. 7 o'clock? Yes, ma'am. And the Riddick uh, Autumn Fest? Frankfurt on. I don't have a date on Frankfurt on. Usually yeah. the last Saturday of September. Rennick Freedom Celebration is the last Saturday of this month. <laughs> okay, that's about all. I've, I've yapped my mouth to death tonight, which is not hard for me to do. But I think we're ready for an adjournment. I have one question. Sure. Does Wait one sec. does the executive committee uh, timestamp sales, like when we actually sell merchandise at events? We did in 2020. Okay. Because that may, I mean, it makes ideal. Like if there's certain times when we can't have volunteers there, we want to have them there when we have the most sales. Well, you know, and, and that was always a trial by error thing, mm -hmm. trial by fire thing in 2020 of when were the best dates best days of the week to be open. We found that Saturdays sucked. Yep, because everybody's gone. Everybody's out. Everybody's, everybody's out of town. Gone. So it just really wasn't worth it to be open on a Saturday. Um, I do think, I'll close on this. This being a year that we don't really have any major competitive local races, I do think we could, we might want to think about branching out a little bit because mm, Virginia is in play. Oh, yeah. yeah, their latest polls have them tied. Latest polls have them tied. Anything we can possibly do in terms of maybe sitting down and phone banking with our friends over in Virginia for Trump, I think that is a great opportunity for us to be involved beyond our borders. The Democrat controls from Washington to Richmond. Right. They've got Nova, but if you have enough turnout in, in in southern and southwest Virginia like they did for Glenn Youngkin, then you have a shot. Mm -hmm. And Mark Jarvis knows that. They live in Virginia. Right. Oh, well, right. 
Steve, do you still motion to adjourn? Yes, sir. Is there a second? Uh, Danny seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Thank you all very much. Appreciate you. <laughs>